Welcome to the fifth element Mondo Shawan build up tutorial. If you're interested in learning how this was made, check the links in the description. In this video, I'll review the following steps prepping the parts, base coating, spattering, airbrush detail, final assembly, and how to create the display stand. Here is the kit. I will do a walk through all the different parts. This is the head casting, it's got a hollow core. This will allow for easier electronics installation for the eyes. Here is the neck. This is a solid casting. And you'll notice that there's a stem at the bottom of the head. That stem inserts into the neck and it orients a very certain way. The kit also comes with this angle plate. This goes at the base of the neck to, to give the head a little bit more of an angle. The kit also includes two tusks. These guys are angled also properly. And those go right onto the chin on both sides. We have two eyes. These are translucent cast. They look opaque, but when you put an LED behind it, it'll have a little red halo of light. So it's a very simple kit. And then this is the deluxe version. It will include this display base. Today I'm going to be using this as a mount for the head, so it's going to sit onto the base like this. Later down the road I'll be showing a deluxe version that uses this as the bottom, and the head will mount on another plate, and these will all be backlit, backlit colors. But today's tutorial is going to mount onto the base like this. The seam line on the neck is pretty easy to address. It's a very minimal seam line. I like using these flexible sanding sponges because it really lets you get inside of contours. Same thing with the head. You have a seam line that is mostly at the, the bottom and on very easy to trim areas. So we have a seam line that's across this. This whole area is covered up with the neck so you don't even really need to clean that. But as far as this section goes, just a little bit of light sanding if necessary, just a tiny little very thin layer of filler and smooth it all down. I'm going to apply a little bit of Bondo across this seam line. Very thinly. Doesn't need much. This is just one application of this and you're finished. Again, you don't have to worry about this main circle that's right here. It's completely covered up by the neck. But we're just going to apply a little bit across this seam line. Give that about five minutes to cure. And this will be ready to clean up and move on to the next stage in about 15 minutes. Okay, I've already applied Bondo across this seam line. Just takes a little bit. Reprimered it. And now I am just running a fine grit soft sponge over the surface. Once those are cleaned up, go ahead and insert the stem into the neck. And this orients only one way. This is contoured at the back to fit this head. Here's your neck mount. Flat black. Here are the two eyes. As you can see, they're already really glossy, but I want to give them just an extra glossy kick. So I am using resin spray. It's a multi-purpose clear gloss finish sealer it's from a company called Castin Craft. And again, for the, for the makers out there, I like to show barcodes. This will give an extra boost to the shine really amazing stuff. You can also do this with a, an automotive lacquer clear gloss finish, like a candy finish, where it's the same. But this is a little bit easier since it's in this aerosol can. And just give this a, just a coat or two, and you can see that that's already much shinier. I've never done a paint job that's this exaggerated with spatter, so I've been doing a couple little tests, and I've kind of figured out 
which direction I'm going to go in and here is the supplies you'll be needing so as you can see this is it's like a base of gold there's copper spatter there's silver spatter there's yellow spatter and browns and dark colors it's really crazy so this was my first version last night it's kind of playing around and then here is my second version which is a bit more contrasty and there's a bit more color going on and you'll see as we go but this is a very flexible technique. If you don't like how it's going, you can always knock it down and redo it or go heavier with different colors. But you kind of get an idea for what we're going to do today. Pretty exciting, very unique. Here's the colors we're using today. I've got gold. I have copper. These are all just Home Depot rattle cans. Matte clear is going to be uh, very important to use flat black. As far as acrylics go, I've got something called marigold yellow. It's not quite yellow, it's sort of a, a, a more of a rich mustardy rich yellow. A medium brown, flat black, white. I'm using off-the-shelf Rust-Oleum metallic gold. Just giving it a real light coat so it dries fast. You're just looking for a base coat. That gold is dried. I'm going to seal this with a gloss Rust-Oleum clear coat. Now with this paint spatter, I did some tests last night. I started with a base of gold. I sealed it just like we have the head. And I did spattering of black and rust, a little bit of copper back into gold but the trick is you need to start with a darker base than this bright gold we want to give it contrast before we go in with lighter colors or else it's just gonna just all blend in and just be a muddy mess so we want contrast and I'm just making this up as I go but I just discovered that let me start the back of the head here if I spray this down with water I get all these water droplets I'm just gonna do this little section right here so I get all these water droplets out of this. And I'm going to come in with black. I'm going to have a paper towel handy pretty fast. So just right here. I'm going to stand pretty far back from the model. I'm about almost a foot and a half, nearly two feet away. And I'm just misting the surface over the water droplets. Then I'm going to come in right away with this paper towel, dab it off, dab off that water, and you can see that I've got this already, I've got this modeling effect right there. Zoom in so you can see that. That's what you're going for. Here's one other tip I want to share with you. The closer you are to the surface, the more fat water droplets you're going to get. So right here, I'm super close. I get these nice fat drops. I'll let you guys watch this one. So far away, missed it. Flat black. And let's wipe that off and see what we have. Look at that. Got this beautiful random spots here. Just with these two colors, I think you guys can see where I'm at with this. We have some very satisfying modeling already happening. We've got some good contrast. The, next, the neck is a really good example here too, and the cheek. So you can see we've got, we've got a really good start. Now it's time to do some spattering. I've got some colors mixed up here. I've got a rusty copper color, I have a yellow ochre color, I've got a gray, and we're also going to need a gold and a silver. The silver and gold acrylic just aren't bright enough, so I'm going to stick with rattle can paint. Can't spray rattle can paint into a regular party cup, you have to use the special paint cups, the enamel cups. 
how we're going to do that is we're going to spray some gold down into the basin of this. Then we're going to thin that down with 99% iso alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. So we're going to pour a little bit in there and thin it so we can spatter this. And I'll do the same thing with silver. This photo is a film used prop and you can see the modeling and the spattering that's going on. There's a lot happening here. There's a lot of different colors. This one looks particularly yellow, although there's a lot of other photos that show that there's gray and silver and dark spattering happening too. Here you can see my color palette. I've got my silver. Again, this is a virgin, freshly trimmed brush. This one is gold. This one's gray. I've got a yellow ochre. And this one is a coppery color. Kind of a, a rusty, it's in between like a rust and a copper. It'll look more rust when it hits the surface. So all new brushes, I'm not going to mix colors. The, as soon as I'm, I'm done with one color, that brush is going back into its container. And I'm just going to go back and forth between these colors until I'm satisfied with my result. So here we go. I'm starting this one with a yellow color. And as you can see, it's, it's very translucent. There's a lot of water here, very little paint. So when this hits the surface, it'll be somewhat see-through. It's hard to get an angle here, but I'll do it back here. So I'm going to wipe some of this off on, on my uh, paper. Then I'm going to flick. And that's going to give me some light variant spatter. Layer by layer, this will build up, and it'll be very, very dramatic. But at, when you start this, it's going to be very subtle. Okay, next color is going to be this copper color. I'm going to start very mild and get most of that paint off my brush. I'm just going to see what this looks like. Ah, it's a great color. Oh, that's that just adds a lot of a lot of personality. I'm also flicking in a vertical direction. Until now, I was just doing this, but now I'm starting to do this longwise. I'm getting a little bit of a different effect. Don't forget to address your tusks. I was noticing they were sitting, being neglected, so I'm going to make sure that I'm getting some spatter on these guys too. Before I go in here with the really bright colors like gold, I'm going to give this a little more contrast with gray. Again, this is a really good a good trick here is if you just hold up a piece of plastic and I can see what my pattern is. Then I can control this a little bit more. But if I wanted fatter drops, I can just dip my brush in here and from a really far away just fling it. Just fling that gold. I think I might come come back and do that with the yellow. And that's going to give me fatter drops. So I'm really far away. I'm like flicking my brush from good almost two feet away. And that's going to give me fatter, more bold droplets. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this spatter. I've got some really good breakup. I've got all my various colors shining through. It's not too much. It's all very muted and it's all very organic and broken up. Let's go in here and start adding our black. We're going to hand paint some black areas and then we're going to airbrush. Now before we move into this next step, this uh, shortcut of getting this all dark in between these vents. 
Before you do that, you've got to clear coat the entire model. Another coat of Rust-Oleum Matte Clear. I've already done that. It's already dried. So now I can do a black filter into this area and then wipe it off without it staining the surrounding area. I am just going to liberally paint inside each of these vents. Okay, so there's my my pass at that. Wipe off the excess. And there we go. Just let that dry. I have my airbrush out. We are going to start accenting this. We're going to accentuate this line. We're going to define this line. We're going to put a halo of darkness around this eye. We're going to define these mouth vents. Put a little bit of shadowing into some of these round details. On the sides, we're going to darken up these division lines and these segments. Shadow in this line, this line. So essentially, we're coming in next and defining some of these details. The tusks I have assembling with a internal pin. This is just a piece of brass rod. I have a little corresponding hole set up here. And that just slides in and you can either leave it loose uh, because it fits pretty stable or you can just glue it down from there. And that has a lot of internal support. And the fat end of the eye goes towards the mouth and the skinny end towards the back of the head. Both sides. Let's address the base now. I'm going to base coat this in a, a sort of another yellow ochre kind of color, going for a sandstone feeling on this base. I found this at Ace. It is caterpillar yellow. This is the same color I paint the fifth element stones when I make those. So just we're gonna base coat this caterpillar yellow. Before I paint this base, I'm going to put a backing on it. And the way I have this oriented is the fire symbol is the top left. So there's your front and here's your back. So I am going to back up this, all these symbols with this uh, a piece of uh, styrene. A little bit of spray adhesive on the back of this and we're going to adhere that and then we're going to paint this. And if you really wanted to, you can texture the top of this with something like Sculptor Coat or a, a very thick acrylic or anything that you would like to just put texture on. You can throw sand on it. You can make bumps and cracks. I mean, you can go crazy with this. You don't want this to be just one color. So just a little bit of variation on the contrast with some of this dark brown. I'm not going to go through every single little step for what you can do with this base. I have a tutorial on fifth element stones and I'll link that in the description. And that will take you through all the steps that you can do to weather a stone looking prop. But for this, I'm just going to run through these steps for this video real quick. I'm going to give this a little bit more color breakup now by stippling on with some spray paint applied to a piece of plastic and some paper towel wadded up. I'm going to apply a little bit of yellow and a little bit of brown. You'll notice that this plaque has a little hole that is perfectly centered to this plaque. This is a little angled 
base plate for the neck. I'm going to put that round about center. I'm going to cheat it up just a little bit taller. Now I'm going to drive a screw through the base plate, through the mount plate, into the neck. What I've done is I've pilot holed four locations. I've countersunk some spots in here so these screws will sit inside. I want them to be flush. This head is now extremely solidly mounted to the neck. The neck is solidly mounted to the angle plate with four screws. The entire assembly is mounted with four three inch screws to the MDF base. From here I can screw this or hang it directly on a wall. I can shadow box this and hang it. For this, so I can take photos put this on display on the bench. I'm just going to mount it to this uh, 2x4 framework right here. It's going to drive four more screws into this, into the neck from the opposite side, and there's the display. All done. This was a one and a half day build of the life-size Mondo Shiwan head. This makes it look a little bit better. I'm getting ready to put this in the photo booth for some shots and maybe the shots will show the texture a little bit better. You can see if I get really up close, you can see this really wonderful modeling texture, spatter, uh, and that's what the film used ones look like. They're very freckly and spattery. There's no solid colors. It's all very similar to this, just like this. Okay, that's it. Uh, in the future, you'll see one of these in a little separate video that it will have light-up eyes. The eyes will have an LED embedded into the translucent lens, and it will run inside the head. It'll go down the neck and probably to a, a hidden switch that's on the side. And my buddy is talking about putting the symbol base on the bottom and then backlighting it. So you may be seeing that pretty soon. Thanks for watching this build up instruction video. To pick up a kit, visit the links in the description. To see more content like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.